You are welcome to the Griffin Park, home of Brentford Football Club, the, champion, the English Championship side here in London for the 55th clash between the Super Eagles of Nigeria and the Black Stars of Ghana. I am Ibrahim Sani, together with Christopher Foku. Now, um, it's quite interesting that the Ghana Black Stars have not beaten the Super Eagles for the past 15 years. They're trying to turn this thing around this year. With us this evening is the coach of the Ghana Black Stars, Frenchman Claude Loa. Claude, good evening. Good evening. First, before we start off, I just have to say happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, you had a wonderful birthday party thrown to you by your players this afternoon. How do you feel about that? I was, uh, you know, I'm more than sensitive as this kind of this kind of situation, and I was very, very proud. I'm proud to be a, to handle this national team of Black Star, but I was very proud what they gave me the, at noon. The, this beautiful cake with the flag of the of Ghana on this cake. It was a very special moment for me. Now, um, Ghana have not beaten Nigeria since 1992. Would that be a turnaround today? I hope so. It's a dream, you know, because we know it will be a difficult game. There is a very beautiful team of uh, of Super Eagles, but we have also a very beautiful team. The players are, I think, they want absolutely to achieve something to, tonight. I hope we'll do that. Uh, we have the potential, we have the quality. Now there is a game of football. I don't want too much to put too much pressure on them, but uh, when I spoke with them a few minutes ago in the changing room, I, they were completely already in the game. and. Uh, I think first we will play a very good game, second it will be a very fair game, you know, with all what happened everywhere in the world in the football games. Uh, we, will, we will show tonight with uh, these two beautiful African teams that uh, we can be an example. Can you predict the score? No, no. I never predict the score. I hope we will win. Thank you very much, Claude Loire. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, um, Chris, that was Claude Loire. You heard all he said. Uh, what are your impressions about what he said? Well, he's highly confident. He came into town days before the team actually arrived. And you can tell he's really determined to turn this debacle. 15 long years. But uh, we have one of the key players of the Super Eagles. I'll be speaking to him in a moment. Uh, Wilson, 15 years, Ghana has failed to beat Nigeria. And yet, Nigeria seems to have a lot of respect for Ghana. For sure, because Ghana is a great side, football nation and uh, a lot of respect because of uh, they have so much talent and players so that is where that is where it is but uh, we just have to pay the respect because uh, the game is a game and uh, we hope today our guys will do a great game and uh, can you tell us a little bit about a team that you're putting out tonight i mean we've got loads of premiership stars french based stars like yourself tell us a little bit about the team i think uh, the coach just said we have to represent our nation nigeria Every game is really taken serious because Ghana is really coming out to get this game because what happened in the last Nations Cup? Uh, you shouldn't forget, Ghana just went to the last World Cup and we didn't go. I think uh, it's going to be a very tough game tonight and um, we're looking pretty forward to look at the, a good game tonight. And um, can you tell us about some of the threats you feel? Uh, who are some of the most dangerous players on the Ghana side, do you think? <laughs> you know, Ghana has great stars, you know, so, you know, the ACN, Apia, and the rest. I think they have a great team. I think uh, Asian, Asian can do the man, they can do the job for the team alone because he's a great personality, a hard working guy and um, he didn't play the last Nations Cup. I think fortunately for the team of Ghana but I think tonight I think it's going to be a, a big game tonight. And uh, your expectations, 15 years Ghana's failed to beat Nigeria. Are you going to continue the trend or will you perhaps lose tonight? <laughs> I think we are not here for that. I think we have to keep our flag flying and uh, we have to represent the nation because we have to give all we got tonight because uh, a game is a game. So I think the better side, the better nations to win because this is a state friendly game, no matter what. Right, and thank you very much, Wilson, for talking to us. Thank you very much. This Right. Uh, he looks to be extremely confident, Ibrahim. Yes, Wilson is quite confident. If you look at the records, the last time both sides met was at the African Nations Cup and they won by 1-0. But as he rightly pointed out, um, the Black Stars didn't have players like Muntari, 
ACN and the rest, and a few other players. Exactly. But um, the Super Eagles have also, you know, shot up since then. You can just imagine that three of their top scorers are among the top scorers here in England. And don't forget that they are the number one ranked team in Africa, ninth best team in the world. Now, um, so you can you can just imagine that these are some of the best teams we have assembled here, and it will be it will not be as easy as it used to be for the Super Eagles. And I swear, I know for sure that uh, the festive atmosphere here will continue even up to the match. Now, Chris, um, can you run us through the lineup of the Ghana national team? Well, well, what I, what I do know, the information I do have is that uh, Richard Kingston starts in goal. And then we also have Hans Adusape starting at right back, Habib Mohamed at left back, and in the central defense, a return from injury for Ilyasa Sheila and John Mensa. In midfield, we have the usual suspects, Michael Essien, Stephen Apia, Lai Kingston, and Sule Ali Montari, with Junior Agogo and Asamoj and the baby-faced assassin, they call him, leading the attack. So it's a usual lineup, the same lineup that played against South Korea, that won 3-1 in a friendly some months back. So uh, it's going to be quite interesting. We are not so sure what the lineup for the Nigerians would be like, and um, we'll, we'll live to see and wait what happens. I think Lord Owusu is approaching us very soon. We'll be talking to him, but the Nigerians, make no mistake about it, will field a very strong lineup. Oruma himself, the likes of Yakubu Igbeni, the likes of Obafemi Martins, if he's here, the likes of Kanu. Well, we have Lord Owusu here, and I'll leave you to talk to him then. Now, uh, Lord Owusu is a player who plays on this pitch. This is his club. But he is a player of the Ghana national team and has been out of action for some time now. We want to get his updates or updates on his injury situation. Because of the injury, he wasn't able to go to the World Cup. But he's here with us tonight. He'll give us an update on his injury situation and possibly what, is, what he expects in tonight's game. Now, Lloyd, um, how's your injury coming around? Yeah, it's coming along very well now. Uh, I've started a lot of training, or very light training. I can do a lot of sprinting, turning and checking. So I'm aiming to come back uh, by the end of, end of February, early March. Now, uh, you looked out, I just saw you with Envy looking at your colleagues rolling out onto the pitch. Uh, did you ever think that I should be here playing tonight? Always, especially being like on my home turf, you know what I mean? It's just the kind of place, this, this is what football's all about, playing with the best players in the world and hopefully my, my opportunity will come again when I get fit again. So when should we expect you back in action? Hopefully, like I said, early March, uh, get some games under my belt and then hopefully see how the season comes from then. But then my main interest is to make sure I get 100% fit first and then next season I'll be back with a bang. Now back to the match. Ghana are playing Nigeria. For 15 years, Ghana have not beaten Nigeria. What should we expect? What are your expectations? I mean, to be honest, the expectations now are going to be very high. After what happened at the World Cup and we've been doing so well in our friendly games as well. So we know it's going to be a hard game because the Nigerians have got some great great players, a lot of them playing in the Premiership here in England. But I believe with the Ghanaian players we've got on, on tour tonight, we'll have a really good game. So if you can put your finger on the trigger, what will be the score? I have to obviously, I have to be a bit biased and go with a Ghanaian win. I'm going to go for 2-1 to Ghana. 2-1 for Ghana. We'll hold you to that there uh, in full time. But uh, before you go, you were in the dressing room with the Ghana national team. What were the players saying to each other? Yeah, they, they were very relaxed. All the boys were buoyant, feeling, feeling good. They had a good day at the hotel today, just been relaxing. Good training last night. So now they're all here ready, ready and moving to go with the game. Thank you very much, Thank Lloyd very Osu. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, viewers, that, that was Lloyd, Lloyd Osu, the, 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 the striker for the Ghana national team. In fact, we've not had the opportunity of getting the lineup for the Nigerians because they actually came into the stadium late. But uh, within some time, we should be able to have the, the lineup for the Nigerians. We, we certainly should. But uh, uh, when we're looking at the team, we, um, I suspect that Bitenyama would probably be in goal. The captain, Joseph Yobo, will be at the heart of the defence. He's had a superb season for Everton. And looking at the likes of uh, uh, Yakubu Egbeni, I keep mentioning them because they're doing so well in the Premiership. Himself, Kanu, Obafemi Martins, Oruma himself in midfield. They've got quite an, a galaxy of stars. Obi Mikel, unfortunately, injured, so he's going to be out of this particular clash. But Ibrahim, look at the atmosphere. It's absolutely amazing. It's amazing. Um, it, it was being estimated in the newspapers here in the United Kingdom that there are about one million Nigerians living here and about some 400,000 Ghanaians. And before a kickoff, I think we should see a huge crowd here. But uh, Chris, just a few updates on the Nigerian national team. Um, two days before the game on Saturday, a few of the English clubs said they were not going to release the team. But the Nigerian Football Association came, they were not going to release some two players, Obafemi Martins and Mikel Obi.
But the Nigerian Football Association came strongly to say that they want their players released, otherwise they will resort, they will resort to FIFA. Now, um, yesterday, after last night's training, Mikel came to training, and the latest information we have is that Martins is in Lagos and probably might be looking at the interviews we are conducting at this moment. Which is really regrettable, because if Martins is not going to play, it's going to uh, kill the Nigerian attack. In fact, Yakubu Aibeni has pace, but Martins has a lot of pace himself. And it's certainly going to be really interesting to see exactly what happens. In fact, I believe we will have the Nigerian lineup uh, pretty shortly. But that's the Ghanaian lineup, which I mentioned a few moments ago. And uh, like I said, the usual suspects in midfield. And um, we're going to have them here now. And I think, yes, yes um, as I suspected, Victor Inyama is in goal. George Abbey uh, is playing at right back. Tai Tai will remember him. Scored that goal against uh, Ghana during the African Nations Cup. We have uh, Sey Olofinyana, who plays his football for Wolverhampton Rovers. And we also have John Utaka, who is quite a good striker himself. Christian Obodo. Mikel Obi is actually starting tonight, viewers. So it's certainly going to be an interesting night. We have uh, Osazi Odemingui, who's having an excellent season for Lille. We have uh, Ayodele Makinwa, who plays in Italy. We have Joseph Yoba, the captain. And we have Obina Uwanyeri. So surprisingly, Yakubo is on the bench. So is Julius Agahoa. And Joseph Enakere, Kanu is also on the bench. Sam Soji is also on the bench. So it's Chiladu Ogbuke who plays in Norway. So quite a strange lineup from Bertie Vox, you would imagine. Um, Bertie Vox is not coaching tonight. It's, it's, uh, it's the, a the, Guavon. It's a Guavon who's still in charge. But nevertheless, he'll be watching anyway. Exactly. The contract of Bertie Vox is still to be sorted out. They are still in talks. But from the lineup, you see that the Nigerians are determined. They are not going all out as we expected them to have gone all out. Um, from the lineup, you can see that uh, top, top strikers like uh, Yakubu and Kanun Ranko are the bench, which means that they, they are quite cautious as to what they'll be doing in attack. But 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 we can't discount the danger that the likes of John Otaka and Odemingui pose because they're excellent strikers. On given given any day, they would score goals. Otaka, I do remember, has scored a couple of hat tricks in the French Championnat, and Osazio Odemingui, as I mentioned earlier on, doing extremely well for Lille. So. Uh, in spite of the fact that Yakubu and uh, Kano are not starting, you can tell that this is quite a compact and young Nigerian lineup, and they could cause Ghana some problems with their pace. Exactly, they could cause Ghana some problems. And talking about Nwaneri or Obina, who has joined FC Sion in, in, in Switzerland some few days ago, hoping to you know start his European career from, after moving on from Esperance. With all these players that they have, you can see that definitely Nigeria are out for the kill. They really want to kill the Black Stars and continue their dominance over the Black Stars. But Chris, you would have to agree that since the World Cup, a lot have ch uh, has changed for the, the national team of Ghana. It certainly has. But one thing I would like to mention, we probably would work in Ghana's favor tonight, is the unity and teamwork that has come out of the team. These are the same couple of players who have been playing for the national team for the past two years, uh, give or take a few players. And in fact, since the World Cup, their record has been quite phenomenal. Winning, I think, three or four games, I stand to be corrected, and drawing just one against Australia and Loftus Road with basically the same players. And the Nigerians, I do not know how long these players have been playing together, but if there's one thing that Ghana would have over them, maybe not on paper, it is the teamwork and cohesion that probably they might have. So uh, a lot has indeed changed for Ghana, the Black Stars, and they're, they're doing really, really well. One wonders why the ranking keeps slipping, maybe because of the, <laughs> the, friendly, the friendly nature of the games they're playing. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's not a part, but for the, they are hosting of the 2008 Nations Cup. You know, on the rankings, you get three points if you play competitive matches, and you get one point if you win in a friendly Which match. Which is regrettable. So, uh, exactly. So that is the situation w with them. But what do you think the influence of Essien, Michael Essien, the Chelsea midfielder, would be on this game? Well, I would refer to a very interesting comment that Claude Leroy passed when we went for the press conference yesterday. He mentioned that he was delighted to see Essien playing as a centre-back in his last game for Chelsea. And when he, as a centre-back, you don't, you don't actually do a lot of running as you would do in midfield. So it's, in his opinion, he feels that Essien will be fresh for this game. He's an excellent policeman in front of the back four. And I would imagine that uh, he would actually cause the Nigerians loads of problems. Of course, with the usual suspects, Stephen Apiatule Montari just in front of him, he is really going to be a key man 
for Ghana. I mean, he's now one of the best midfielders in the world, no doubt, and he will show his style tonight again. Thank you very much, Chris. And now we can take the opportunity to talk to Justin Addo, one of the organizers of tonight's game. Now, uh, Justin, are you impressed with the turnout? Oh, yeah. We always thought, we always thought Ghana and Nigeria would bring us a massive turnout. Yeah, we are impressed. We think everything is going well. Now, um, what prompted you to put together Ghana and Nigeria here in London? Yes, they're the two biggest African communities in the UK, and the best we can do is to make sure we bring together our brand of African football. Um, a lot of people are even calling for an encore. With the turnout, the, the atmosphere we are having now, the, the fantastic atmosphere, even though it's a rivalry, but a friendly rivalry, people are saying that it should be done again, maybe during the summer. Let's, let's finish playing the game, look at the numbers, and we'll see what, what happens after that. Now, um, a lot of people have also spoken about the need for um, a lot of African teams to, to play here in Europe, the good training facilities and the rest. How difficult is it to put together a match like this? It's very difficult. Getting a stadium for a, for a start is, is very, very difficult. The costs are very high as well. And obviously, it depends on a lot of key key financially has to be able to make sense. You have to be able to pull the crowd. It's, it's one thing saying you want to get an African country here. It's another thing saying are the two teams going to get a big crowd? Those are the things we need to look at. It's a numbers game and if the numbers don't favour you, there's no point doing it. So if the numbers are good tonight, does it mean that uh, maybe during the summer and beyond more African teams will be playing here? Yeah, obviously the English FA has a limitation on the amount of games each country plays in the UK. So obviously you have to look at that as well. I think it's two, two games um, per season, per season. So the season runs from August to June. So you have to look at all those factors, but there's a lot of factors that you have to equate. But hopefully we'll see how it goes. Now, the Super Eagles have already, in fact, the board members of the NFA have already spoken of their willingness to play matches here, not only here in London, yeah. but other parts of, um, other parts of Europe. Yeah. So, um, apart from Ghana, Nigeria, are there any other countries you have in mind? In yeah, basically, basically, we have a lot of countries. We are working. It's a slow progression. We are trying to strike deals with a lot of companies to see what brings. So there's a lot of things in the pipeline, obviously, because of trade, trade confidentiality. It's not something I can tell you now, but yeah, we are looking at things like that. Now, um, you, you've been to the dressing rooms, seen the gossips. You are the man um, putting together the game together with your other colleagues. What have the players been saying? The Ghanaian team, the Nigerian teams, you've been talking to the players. What have they been telling you? The Ghanaians are very confident. They know they, 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 they aim to end their 15-year year jinx, whereas the Nigerians are ready to repeat the dose again. So let's see what happens. Thank you very much, Justin Addo, for coming here. Thank you, Ibrahim. Now, that was Justin Addo, the organizer, one of the organizers. There are three companies coming together to put together this game. And Chris, he was pointing out that it's difficult to put together matches of this nature here in the UK. It certainly is. You're talking about paying for the stadium, paying for the staff to open the stadium. You're talking about publicity. You're talking about, I mean, accreditation. You're talking about loads of things. Appearance fees for the two teams. I mean, last I heard, the bill is £450,000. And so, um, quite frankly, it's, it's no surprise that things are quite hard, but I'm looking at the attendance and I'm thinking, tw uh, this holds 12,700 people, and already I can see more than half of that, which is a pretty good return for all the investment that has gone into this match. So hopefully, the organizers would at least be able to break even, pay off the two teams with the appearance fees, and have something small left for operational costs. It's not easy, I guarantee you that. Now, if we can, let me run you through the lineups again. For Ghana, we have Richard Kingston in post. The defenders are Hans Edu Sape, who plays in Germany. Then we have Habib Mohamed, who soon, he told me this morning that he'll join a team possibly in Romania. We have Ilyasu Alassan, who plays in um, uh, Russia. We have John Mensa of Rons in France. Michael Essien, the Chelsea star midfielder. Lae Kingston, who recently signed for the Scottish side Hearts. Steven Apia of Fenerbahce. Asamoa John of Udinese. Asamoajan, we all knew, signed a contract with Spartak Moscow in Russia, but he has revealed exclusively this evening that he will not be going to Spartak Moscow because Udinese have not, um, did not get a replacement for him. So he will be staying on there until they have a replacement and the transfer window is still open in Russia. So they are still looking up to that. We have Junior Agogo of Nottingham and then Sule Muntari on the, and then Sule Muntari of Udinese in Italy. Then uh, on the bench we have Samir Jay, 
John Penso, Francis Diko, Ericardo, Asamoa Primpong, and Derek Asamoa. And for the Nigerians, we have Vincent Inyama in goal. For the defenders, George Abe, Taye Taiwa, who plays for Marseille. Sei Olofinyana, who plays for Wolverhampton Wanderers. We have John Utaka, who plays for Lons. We have Christian Obodo. John Mikel Obi, who plays for Chelsea. Odemingwe Osazi, who plays for Lille in France. Ayodele Makinwa, who plays in Italy. Joseph Yoba, the captain. And Obina in Waneri. And on the bench, we have Austin Ejida, the reserve goalkeeper. Julius Agahoa, who recently made his debut for Wigan Athletic. We have Chinedu Ogbuke, who plays for Lynn Oslo. We have Sam Soji who plays for Reading. We have Yakubo Aybeni, who plays for Middlesbrough. Joseph Enakahire and Unwanko Kano, who has been scoring the goals for Portsmouth. So quite a strong lineup for both sides, and it's looking really, really interesting. An intriguing matchup uh, awaits, and the fans bellowing out their support. It's interesting, isn't it, Ibrahim? In front of us, we have the Ghanaian supporters. Behind us, the Ni Nigerians. Yes, that, that, that is quite interesting. But I, I would have to say that some of the teams, uh, some of the supporters are mixing. And as we await the teams to, to trot onto the field, you can see that there's some, time, some sort of a unity between both sides. And we hope that the unity will be shown on the pitch. And the, the friendly rivalry between the two sides will be shown on the pitch. And we'll have a good game for fans across Africa to see tonight, Chris. Well, definitely. I mean... Uh, you see Ghanaians and Nigerians who live here in London and they've been teasing each other. You go to the forums on Ghana web and it's like, oh, we'll beat, we'll beat Ghana 3-1. We'll beat Nigeria 2-0 and all that. You know, all kinds of predictions. I'm sure after this, my people will be friends again. But the team that loses, the fans are going to be in trouble for one full week with all the teasing that's going on. So I'm sure, uh, well, probably some people would want to get a draw so that everybody goes home satisfied. Because I can tell you, if Ghana should lose or Nigeria should lose, the other fans are going to have a field day cracking up with all kinds of jokes and teasing. Exactly. The laughs go, goes on everywhere. And the Nigerians also have their forum called the Cyber Eagle. And they'll also be expecting. They've also been going on about what they'll do to Ghana and the 15 year dominance uh, will continue. They want to extend their 15 year dominance. But uh, their field will definitely, will definitely decide. But a lot of people have been wondering, Chris, why it is that with so much interest in all the, um, the Ghana captains team up here, he still wants to stay in Turkey. Well, what I do know is that he has a contract with, with the Turks. Remember, he played for Juventus for some time. He wasn't getting much playing time there with, with the Turks. He's idolized. I remember watching Ghana against Turkey in uh, Bokum. And when the Turkish fans saw their team, they started making all the noise. When Steven Apia came out, they went absolutely bananas. He is an idol at Fenerbahce, and that's one reason why he wants to stay. And apparently, he's been paid very well there. So at, at the very least, he'll want to see out his contract before he moves elsewhere. He's sought after by Arsenal, I can tell you that. But he wants to stay with Fenerbahce. Now, before we go, uh, before the players walk onto the field, I have to tell you that the managers, a lot of English Premiership managers are here to look out for new talent. I, I just caught up with Harry Redknapp, the coach of Portsmouth, and he told me that I'm here to look, uh, to look at Sule Muntari. He's also courted a lot of interest from English clubs and um, did he say are quite adamant to release this player and some other Nigerian players are also on the uh, on the on the sidelines, also being watched by this English club. We talk about Chinedu Obuke, who plays for Lane Oslo in Norway. He's also been courted by Portsmouth, but uh, they could not agree on a fee and also agree and um, get a work permit for him. So they are still waiting for the new transfer window that that is in June to see if they can make anything out of it. But let's talk about the influence of African players in the Premiership. They've been fantastic so far this season. Well, you're talking about Didier Drogba, £24 million, SEM, £24.1 million, and there's still more to come. You see, now they've realized that Africa is the, is the new home of talent, but talent that is becoming expensive. They look at the likes of the Nigerian strikers who've been lighting up the premiership. SEM has done fantastically well for Chelsea, and there, there's more to come. So I, I, would not, I would not be surprised if only Redknapp uh, Redknapp is not the only Premiership manager here. There might be more Premiership managers who will be looking to see whether they can sign on players when the next transfer window opens. So, I mean, Africa is now the new hotbed of talent. And so it's not surprising that many people are there.